other little part that I would like you to um La Professor Jimmy. Oh boy, I get to be a professor. That means have you ever do you want do you, have you ever wanted to be a teacher, Jimmy? That means teacher in French. Like, well I mean same thing. Uh, yes and no. I mean, it's like obviously, like if people Thank ask you. my advice on shit, or like, hey, how do you know if like this antique's legit or valuable? It's like, yeah, I teach them that. Okay. But it's like, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so where do you want me to stand? Um, first of all, here's the lighter back. Thank you. I would like you to stand. In the front center right here and give a lesson, an educational, entertaining lesson. Ben, are you still serving drinks up? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you want me to move that wood to the side? Like right now. Oh, yeah, Donnie, yeah, can you please so. move your wood to the side and poking out your zipper? <laughs> Alright, uh, let me know when y'all are ready. Do we need to take notes or anything? No, no. I, I would like you to pay full attention. And do you know what active listening is? Uh, like where you like talk is... And ask questions. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what active listening means? No, just actively, yeah. just silently listen and paying attention. Yes, maybe you could respond in your head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could say yeah, or you could nod, hold eye contact. Um, Jimmy, you have the floor. Let's learn about... The end of Vietnam and the 70s. <laughs> Obviously, to talk about the entire 70s would be far too long and we'd be here for hours, so I've condensed it to key points and some things that you don't know. So, in the late 60s, a peace deal was nearly made between North and South Vietnam. This peace deal was stopped by then-presidential candidate Richard Nixon. He did so by promising the South Vietnamese that he could get them a better deal. And this would also help boost his presidential campaign. Although at this point, everyone was sick of Lyndon B. Johnson and his Christadelphian ass. President Johnson had federal agents wiretap the conversations that then presidential campaigner, or whatever you call it, Nixon, was having with the president of South Vietnam at the time. President Johnson because he knew the spotlight could then easily be flipped on him for the allowance of the destruction of the USS Liberty because President Johnson was a member of a cult called the Christadelphians. Because President Johnson was a part of a cult called the Christadelphians in which they blindly worship any and all Jewish people, which is why President Johnson was oh so happy when Israel destroyed the USS Liberty. They would also dig into his past to find that he was essentially the teacher of Bill and Hillary Clinton. He had his own sister assassinated for being a whore who knew too much. But that is another story, because that happened before the fucking 70s. So, President Johnson, playing his cards right, put down in a letter the transcript between soon to be President Richard Nixon and the President of South Vietnam in which Nixon said, do not broker this peace deal, I can get you a far better peace deal. President Johnson put this transcript into a letter and sent it to some sort of library of his. I don't really know what exactly he sent it to, it was like a library of sorts. With the orders that was not to be opened for 50 years. Which it was of course not opened for 50 years. This information combined with the mystery surrounding the assassination of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy and the fact that basic fucking knowledge of guns and how they work prove that no, you can't have a fucking magic bullet that Richard... Like smell in our game. I got him. Which proves that you cannot have a fucking bullet ricochet all throughout someone and then somehow appear out the back of their fucking head. Watch out, Kanye. It's the American History X nega over there in a spinner hat. Derek Vinny. Especially yeah. since, due to recent times, we can confirm that there was more than one shooter. And the Kennedy assassination of... Uh, what the fuck do you call it when it's like a... The worst of the thing where simulation was the invention of Black History Month. I'm going to circumcise you, audience. Yay. 
Circumflex J. It was proven in the John Fitzgerald Kennedy assassination simulation that the shots that they claim Dean Harvey Oswald took are not possible. There is still a $500,000 reward for anyone who can match the supposed shots with 100% accuracy, but they only managed to get 60%. Yes. Can you repeat that? Yep, 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 Jimmy fucks dogs. So, as proven by the John Fitzgerald Kennedy assassination game, Lee Harvey Oswald could not have possibly made those three shots. Especially if a bullet is to come out the back of John F. Kennedy's head when Lee Harvey Oswald was facing at the back of John F. Kennedy's head. If he had shot John F. Kennedy in the back of the head, JFK's brains would have blown out the front, and he would have leaned forward. But instead, he leaned backwards, and his brains blew out the back. Real quick, uh, focusing... Jimmy, what does any of this have to do with Vietnam? Yeah, let's get back to... That's one, what I was coming up here to say. Let's get it back to Vietnam. Maybe something more visual. Jimmy is yes. ironically right about everything he's saying. Everyone listen up. Your government hates you and eats babies. So, let's move... Do you know any Vietnam War strategies or like could you reenact something from the war uh, I can't reenact anything the main thing about Vietnam is this the primary opponents were the Viet Cong who were North Vietnamese natives okay. they played dirty through guerrilla warfare by digging deep 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 tunnel systems so okay. deep and complex that they could fit entire tanks in them how about this let's get let's get some Viet Cong people oh, wait oh, I was gonna say go for talking let's get some Viet Cong um, maybe Shinji and Trish could be Viet Cong. Okay. And then you be an American hero and just maybe sort of act out, um, some of the stuff that happened on the war. Could you guys do that? So you could be the night, you could have a 1911 and a flashlight and you could go in the tunnel looking for Shinji and Shinji, maybe you <laughs> have a bamboo stick with feces on it. You, st you stab Jimmy to death. Stab, stab to death. Jimmy, can you speak a little louder? No one can hear you. Speak a bit louder, please. Thank you. Huh? What do I do? It's up to Jimmy. So Jimmy, give them roles as Viet Cong and explain Okay, this is a suicide bombing prostitute child which the Viet Cong actively yes, used. Jane Fonda was more than happy to help the Viet Cong sex traffic children and use them as suicide bombing explosives because the dumb whore thought it was okay since her mother did to her. Kill yourself, Jane Fonda. I hope the Vietnam veteran still alive docks your fucking house and torture you. Anyway, Trish, get up. Jimmy, get me here. Your info is kind of correct, but I fact-checked it false on Encyclopedia Dramatica. Kill yourself. Search <laughs> they would come up to you and say, Five dollar for suck. Five dollar sucky sucky. And you have to yell, Five dollar sucky sucky. But you would accept. And that's when the American soldier would be tricked. The prostitute would either blow up, or they would give the American soldier herpes, who would then bring herpes back to the United States, which is why herpes was not in the United States until the 60s, because of the Vietnam War and Vietnamese prostitutes who kept eating dogs and making poopy spike traps. Shinji. The Viet Cong love to hide in tunnels. Shinji, get down there. The Viet Cong, the Viet Cong love to hide in tunnels. They would set traps, use it with punji sticks, which is when you chug in bamboo and you shit all over it, so that when the American GI steps in it, well, they get infected with all sorts of horrible diseases because human feces is one of the most nat toxic, naturally occurring substances on Earth. No animal can eat our shit and be okay. Even a dog will throw the fuck up. That's how toxic that shit is. Whoa! And sometimes the Viet Cong would make a surprise visit. But other times, the American G.I. were fucking ready for him! Hey, I might give a speech, but one thing I have to correct. Yeah? It's not five dollars sucky sucky anymore, it's fifty dollars. <laughs> oh yeah, that's yeah. cool, that's But cool. continue, you're doing a great job. Oh, thank you, yeah. I, I appreciate it. But yeah, so the Viet Cong would hide in tunnels. Shinji, get in your tunnel! <laughs> the American soldiers would have to crouch down. Usually with a pistol, how the fuck are you going to have an M1911 in a goddamn Viet Cong tunnel and hold your fucking flashlight, Chad? That's not how it fucking worked! Sometimes, but up, but usually the Viet Cong were sneaky. The Viet Cong would dig sharp corners around their tunnels, and then they would ambush 
the American troops and kill them! Ah. Like that! Ah. Oh! My spine! <laughs> And then, of course, the American soldiers would wait with bated breath, hoping that their allies came out of the tunnel. But after a certain while, it's like, well, fuck it, they're probably dead, so they had to burn the tunnels. And of course, the fucking generals in the military industrial complex of the United States decided, oh, hey, this is how we're going to win this war. We're not going to stay on the land that we just fought to capture. We're going to just leave. And let the Viet Cong rebuild everything, so the whole cycle would go again, and again, and again, and all the men who were drafted to Vietnam would come back to a bunch of smelly, bitch-ass hippies spitting on them, calling them baby killers for shit they didn't even want to do. And yeah, that's Vietnam. The Vietnam War ended because, again, President Nixon did not want the peace treaty to go through in the late 60s, so he offered the South Vietnamese president a better deal. This turned out to be a bad idea because the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong, with help of Pol Pot, who they would fight again against later on, after China invaded Vietnam when we left, whose ass they soundly kicked, they did one final push to the capital of South Vietnam, and the South Vietnamese people, who were so discouraged by the rampant corruption in their government and the non-stop barrage of North Vietnam, said, fuck it, we quit. In fact, I think they killed their own president or there was like a coup towards the end or some shit because they were fucking tired of them. Weren't they also sick of the Americans being there too? They were. Some Vietnamese. Well, yeah, some Vietnamese were sick of them. Others were happy because the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong were again literally like raping, pillaging, and plundering everything. Simon, let's show and again, the Viet Cong were taking play. kids and it's like, okay, you're going to be a sex slave or a suicide style. bomber. With the help of Jane Fonda, who's probably like, come here, little boy, I'm an American this actress, take this That's candy. The nicest hair I've ever seen. Because she's Jane fucking Fonda and she needs to die. But anyway, that's how the Vietnam War ended. We didn't necessarily lose by numbers or being soundly defeated, like how Vietnam soundly defeated China and Pol Pot afterwards, which was really fucking impressive because goddamn, we bombed the shit out of them. But still, it's like the South Vietnamese just gave up. And everyone in America didn't fucking like the war. So it's like, well, fuck. What's the point of being here? Let's get everyone back home before people get really fucking angry. And then, of course, there was still the war in Laos, but that wasn't disclosed or declassified till long after. That's why they call it the Ghost War. Because it didn't happen until long after the Vietnam War. Well, they didn't admit it happened until after that. Yes? Um, didn't the Vietnam War also start with uh, the French colony of South Vietnam trying to evade from France, and France was having war with them, and brought in America, and then France evaded from South Vietnam? Yes and no, it was very confusing because we were very much against colonization. In fact, after World War II, there's a time where the United States and the USSR joined forces. Uh, it's not the Panama Canal, the Suez Canal, somewhere around there. Great Britain and French were trying to annex that part, and both the Soviet Union and the United States, for the first and only time, said, Fuck you, faggots, we're not doing this again, and they sat, and we soundly defeated them. It was a very small little war that no one really talks about. Mm -hmm. It's kind of goofy. I wish they would make a movie about it. Yeah. That sounds like a goofy movie. I'm now imagining Goofy from Mickey Mouse. <laughs> uh. But that's how we lost the Vietnam War. It wasn't necessarily because of the people at home or the fact that our troops were being ambushed a lot by the Viet Cong because we really only lost tens of thousands of men. Yes, that's a lot of people. But in the grand scheme of things, especially when compared to the loss of life from the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong, holy shit, that's pennies on the fucking dollar. And then, of course, Nixon did win his election because again, he stopped the early peace treaty. And he was able to appeal to the silent majority because he said enough with these radical hippie communists. But I also don't like these fucking Bible thumping cunts. I just want shit to be somewhat normal. So people voted for him. Let's see. Another reason why he won is because of the assassination of Bobby Kennedy. Bobby Kennedy was killed by a combination of Mossad and CIA forces. Okay, all right. All right I think we're done. Oh. Everybody, round of applause. Oh, I want to get into the other 70s stuff. You're pretty stuff. good. You're pretty good, man. That's pretty impressive. All right, let's show our new friend around the house. And, uh, yeah.